Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today I'll be showing you the process I undertook to produce my little machine shop hammer. For people with a lathe or a mill, they are a very useful tool to have. They help ensure parts are seated correctly and flush in the chuck of a lathe or flush in the jaws of a vise. And they are also really useful when you need to dial out run out in long parts. They are also a really good beginner lathe project. It helps you get used to the new lathe and the new materials. And for people like me that have a smaller benchtop lathe, making a smaller lightweight hammer is pretty essential. The size of the machinist hammer should really correspond to the size of the machine, so a smaller benchtop machine like this really calls for a smaller hammer. In CAD, I've drawn up a rough model which I'm going to work from. It is approximately 70mm wide and 200mm tall, with a head made from 3 quarter inch stock. The head will be threaded to accept hammer faces which can easily screw in to offer different hardnesses and shapes to help for different types of hammering applications that you might encounter. So let's get started. I started by chucking a piece of 3 quarter inch brass and faced it. Now this is where I made my first mistake. The stock was not in the best shape and gave a fair bit of run out at the end. I should have really turned down the end so it was spinning concentric with the chuck and then drilled the holes. However, this was my first project on the mini lathe so live and learn. Thankfully the run out didn't turn out to be a huge issue and this part doesn't require high tolerances but this is something that I should have avoided. The holes were tapped for M10 threads. So for my hammer, I wanted a wooden handle. Wood is a pretty affordable material, it is a renewable and sustainable material, and it's a material that I had a fair amount of in the workshop. Plus it's very easy to shape, and it absorbs the shock from hammer hits pretty nicely. However this is entirely up to personal preference. I have seen a lot of people simply drill and tap a hole for a metal handle, and this is perfectly fine. However, since I've chosen to use a wooden handle, I will need to machine a slot in the head. Now at the time that I made this, I actually didn't have my mini mill, but a drill press and a set of files can achieve the same result. Connecting the holes is pretty straightforward, all we need to do is sand away the material. At the same time I'm also making a slight taper in the head to help the handle stay in place when the wedge is applied. The next thing we need to do is make the faces. In total I actually made 6 different faces with different hardnesses and shapes. I made 4 regular faces from brass, aluminium, acetyl and polycarbonate for different hardnesses and I also made 1 dome head for hammering thin shim metal and 1 cone head made from steel to hammer brass rivets. For this video however I will stick to the brass and acetyl head as they are the most common ones that I use. 
Brass is an especially great material to make hammerheads from because it will not produce a spark and in some workshops this is a must because in some workshops around volatile chemicals a spark can be pretty dangerous. The head made from acetal has performed really well. It is such a durable plastic and it doesn't mar any materials. However, machining it was a little bit difficult because it doesn't break a chip, it's just one continuous line. Finally, we need to make the handle, and for it I'll be using a piece of Tassie Oak, a great dense hardwood. Now it will be clear here that my skills really do fall towards the metalwork end of the spectrum, but a bit of time spent with a coping saw and a chisel can produce a really comfortable and pretty nice handle. As a side note, for cuts that don't require small and intricate little cuts and details, it is cheaper and faster to use a mini hacksaw blade rather than a coping saw blade. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.